This is Offshoring and Outsourcing of Philippines, your regular update on the business processing industry in the Philippines. Here's your producer, Henry Acosta, with this week's lineup. Welcome to another episode of the Outsourcing and Offshoring Philippines podcast. For our first guest, we have Joe Moika of Aptus Global Solutions, and you can listen to him at the 50-second mark of the podcast. Our second guest is Mike O'Hagan of Mike's Business Source, and you can listen to him at the 20-minute and the 10-second mark of the podcast. Our third and final guest is Kevin Thompson of Open Look Business Solutions, and you can listen to him at the 25-minute and 52-second mark of the podcast. Hello and welcome to the Outsourcing and Offshoring Philippines podcast with Henry Acosta. Joe is a 17-year vet in the BPO industry and has worked with top companies who are in the Fortune 500 list. He's worked in various roles from the corporate ladder and his experience has led him to becoming the current managing director of Aptis. Aptis is one of the fastest growing BPO companies in Manila and they provide high quality and results driven services to businesses who want to outsource solutions. With that, welcome to the show, Joe. We're glad you Absol- can make it. Absolute pleasure being here, Henry. Thanks so much for, for inviting me. So, yeah, so to kick things off, uh, I just wanted to ask, since you're a veteran in the BPO industry, uh, how did you get started with the BPO industry and what, how come you've stayed so long with it? Well, the BPO industry, at the time we started, uh, Ben and myself, uh, my, 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 my co-founder, um, you know, I was straight out of college, and uh, you know the pay was pretty good. Um, it, we, we had to sacrifice a bit of the uh, a bit of the uh, normal life, uh, given the fact that majority of the the clients that BBO companies had at the time we started were primarily from the U.S. So there, there, there's some sort of paradigm shift that, that had to happen. Um, you know, having to wake up in the evening and, and work through the uh, the early mornings and, and head home. With the sun, well, with the sun high in the sky, um, so it wasn't exactly the most uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, most conventional of jobs when we started off. But it was a very fulfilling job. Um, majority of the people I had started off with uh, took deep pride in our work. Uh, we loved to converse. We we're we're as you know as a as a you know as a as a country. Majority of our population are, are very sociable by nature, so it, it just really fit. It just really fit a lot of the uh, the uh, the characteristics that we possess. And you know, again, it was a very rewarding job as well from a financial standpoint. And you know, um, over the years, I just couldn't see myself in any other position. You know, how majority of us would, when we were five years old, would think about being rocket scientists or astronauts or, t- or train engineers when we grew up. Um, when you're actually there in a position to decide for yourself what career path you'd want to take, and you know if you feel the correct, if you have the proper skill set required to be successful in this industry, you really wouldn't see yourself working anywhere else. And, and I guess that's the that's the gist of my story right there. Um, it was a perfect fit for me. Um, there was a lot of uh, you know it, it, there, it was a huge sense of fulfillment and achievement in what we do on a day uh, day over day. And, you know, again, it's a very rewarding and fulfilling business. So, you know, that's, that's pretty much all I can say about that. Yeah, that sounds great, Joe. And, yeah, with regards to that, can you tell us what Aptus Global Sol- Solutions, uh, what kind of services do you guys offer to the offshore clients? Yeah. One thing that, that Aptus Global Solutions, um, you know, I would like to say unique, um, a unique uh, perspective on it is that... Um, we offer tailor-made solutions for companies looking for outsourced, um, you know, for, for outsourced work. Typically, for larger scale businesses, you already have established verticals, which you, you have the, the, the infrastructure and the talent level to be able to properly execute and manage and operate day over day. Aptus Global Solutions takes that a bit further. Um, to start with, a, lar- a large portion of our clientele are small to medium-sized enterprises, startup businesses, um, who would typically be the people who need the most um, help from from outsourced solutions. Um, and you know, as a result of that, we've been bringing in some businesses which require a very varied skill set um, of you know of talent of of work that needs to be done. Um, you know, we 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 have our our hands on everything from inbound customer service to, to back office data entry, 
um, knowledge process outsourcing, uh, such as you know web development and uh, data analysis and, and reviews and presentations. So it's really a mixed bag of, of the services we offer. We're not, you know, we're not pinned down by any labels as to what type of services we can offer, whether it's, you know, uh, whether it's phone-based technical support or phone-based customer service. Rather, we can provide any sort of, um, of service that any type of uh, SME-sized businesses, to startup companies, to even larger-scale companies um, would require out of us. So, you know, we're pretty much uh, a jack of all trades at this point and uh, have the, a proven track record to back it up. Wow. You're, yeah, up this sounds great. So with regards to that, since you've worked with a lot of BPO companies already in the past and you have so much mm -hmm. experience, what do you think mm -hmm. makes Aptos Global Solutions different from the the other uh, companies that you've worked for, uh, you guys said that uh, you're one of the fastest growing BPO mm -hmm. companies in Manila. So what makes it different? What what makes it grow so fast? Well, to, to start with, um, you know, in this, in this generation, in this era of, uh, of globalization, one of the key key elements of success is really adaptability. And that's one thing we do very well. Again, I'm just to reiterate what I had mentioned earlier. Uh, we're not pinned down by any pre-structured or prefabricated type of, of operational structure. Um, you know, we're a company that's very, very flexible, very, very adaptable. We'll, you know, we'll tailor make and tailor fit solutions to uh, to any outsourcing needs that our clientele may have. And uh, you know, to be honest, that that really goes a long way. Um, especially again, uh, a great portion of our of our clientele are from the SME sized um, classification. So obviously, you know, pretty much we have the, the capability to adjust our support and, and, and service delivery models to suit the majority of the businesses that we're able to interact with. Um, secondary, secondary to that, um, we also offer very, very reasonable rates for our services. Um, and typically a good portion of the, uh, uh, a good majority of, of existing BPO companies would typically take in X number of heads, uh, for, for a fixed price, whereas we will be able to provide solutions for, you know, for, for a minimal number of head count. Um, we have a few campaigns here where our head count is in single digits, um, but we're able to provide them with a high level of, of quality and, you know, and the, the quality of what they expect from larger BPO companies. Um, ben and I, uh, again, my partner, Ben Huson and I, mm -hmm. have, have combined probably 30, 34, 35 years of, of experience under our belts and in multiple facets and multiple departments within the industry. So we, we really have a, um, a solid feel as to, you know, how to construct, um, how to construct personalized outsource solutions for pretty much any client who reached out to us for, uh, you know, for, for, uh, for, a, for a very productive yeah. partnership. With regards to that, uh, yeah, you you mentioned that you have so much experience in the BPO industry. Uh, can you mm -hmm. tell us uh, how's the climate nowadays with the BPO industry, and what do you think is about to happen with the industry here in the Philippines? Oh wow, that's a very good question, man. Um, so to start with your first question, uh, what's the climate like here? I'll let you know now. We started out in 2001. Well, I personally started out in 2001 here uh, with one of the, the most longest, uh, the most established. Uh, companies here in the uh, in the industry in the Philippines, um, we there were 5,000 workers back then in 2001. At this point in time, um, the popu the total population or the total number of, of manpower that collectively the BPO and call center industry have in the country is anywhere between one to 1.5 million people. So, you know, there's been a steady stream of growth. Um, again, because number one, the, the Philippines. Is an ideal location for, you know, for for starting uh, contact centers and, and BPO companies, and you know, that 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 pretty much explains a, a very steady and continuous growth rate uh, for the industry here. Uh, number two, uh, your second question, uh, you know, what can we expect in the future years? If there's ever an industry in the world 
that you know that could call itself in a, in a that could put itself in a situation where there's a steady state of growth it'll probably be the outsourcing industry primarily because at the end of the day you know major capitalist economies you know the US yeah. um, the UK you know a good a good number of these uh, of these countries will always have corporations that have to be successful in order to sustain their economy. And in order for a corporation to be successful, you need to do, you know, you, you pretty much need two things. Number one, you have to be able to generate enough revenue to keep yourself profitable. And number two, you should be able to, to uh, minimize um, costs without compromising the quality of service that you provide or the quality of the products you provide. And, you know, we address item number two for most companies. Because at the end of the day, uh, the prices here in the Philippines, the cost of living is so low, um, mm -hmm. you know, you could pretty much get the same, you know, whereas in the U.S. you'd probably be, depending on your location in the U.S., you'd probably be paying somebody in the industry anywhere from, from five to, to eight dollars per hour. You, you could, you know, set up a, you know, you could outsource, uh, set up a partnership with a, with a BPO company here um, at a fraction of that price without necessarily having to compromise quality. Um, the Philippines is well known for having a huge pop, num a huge number of English speaking yeah. people, you know, in both population and percentage of the overall population. Um, as, as I'm sure you know, Philippines, sorry, Filipinos typically have a, a very neutral accent, um, which, you know, which Americans find very favorable. Um, so that, that's what pretty much one of the reasons that the U.S. Um, has been one of the uh, has been one of our large, you know, U.S. companies have been pretty much one of our largest clients here in the industry for, for all these years now. And, you know, you, you save money in outsourcing. Um, you know, there are a high number of, uh, of, of, of graduates per annum here in the Philippines. You're talking about 400,000 graduates from, from state universities and colleges. And the one thing that, that the industry has here in the Philippines that isn't necessarily true for other parts of the world is that Filipinos can build careers by staying in the industry. Um, other aspects of the world, you know, the, the, this may be seen as a, uh, you know, as a part-time job at best. Yeah. Um, um, but here, you know, there I I have personally seen a, a, a huge you know a huge percentage of the guys I started out with in very successful roles right now after 15, 16, 17 years in the industry. Um, I'm not the first person to, to have worked to, to set up my own um, to set up my own BPO company here. Uh, I know quite a few, and uh, you know, it's just a very very fulfilling industry. I always have to come back to that word yeah. fulfilling and rewarding. Yeah, well, congratulations and yeah, you guys said oh, thank you, man. And yeah, you, uh, you make me feel proud for working hard and all that. <laughs> so yeah, man, it's, it's been a long, tough road coming here, but you know, it, it's yeah. again, it's, it's very rewarding, it's very fulfilling and you know, we couldn't be happier. And yeah, you've been talking about other countries that service BPO. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think or how can you compare our country versus other BPO countries like, let's say, India? That's a, another very good question. Um, I'm not going to knock off India, to, to be honest with you. Um, I think India in itself is, is, a, is a great country, great people, um, a very solid economy uh, backing up the country. Um, the fact of the matter is. India can do so many things um, at par, or perhaps even better than what we can that, that we can achieve here uh, in the Philippines. The primary difference, um, yeah, yeah, India is you know India will always be the IT capital of the world, um, and you know they pretty much have a have a stranglehold on that. I mean, you know, that we the Philippines also has a, a hotbed of uh, of IT professionals who could you know who we could tap into the. Uh, and tap into and bring into the uh, the BPO um, you know the BPO world, so to speak. But at the end of the day, um, Philippines in general, they work a lot better with customers from a customer service standpoint to begin with. Um, we've always been very hospitable, very sociable. Um, we've always been very empathetic, and I think these are qualities that a lot of you know the, a lot of the end customers of our clients, primarily in the U.S., really appreciate. Um, you know, we got the perfect talent pool for people to be able to to empathize and 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 diffuse what could potentially be very volatile situations in terms of you know in terms of uh, a customer's uh, account or perhaps you know uh, and a very broad range of uh, of services and verticals as well from telco to banking to you know to healthcare and whatnot. 
Um, also, uh, again, I had mentioned a few of the other drivers behind these. Um, you know, we have a, a massive talent pool to tap into to be able to fulfill um, headcount and seating requirements. Um, you know, we have a very neutral accent. Uh, I guess I had already mentioned that, which makes us ideal speaking to folks from primarily English speaking countries like the US, like Australia, like the UK and Canada. Um, you know, again, uh, we're, we're the, the cost involved in, inv in investing in outsourcing operations here in the Philippines is very competitive to, uh, to that of India. You know, that, that pretty much sums it up. I mean, it's really uh, it's really ours for the taking, uh, speaking from, you know, from a collective Filipino standpoint. And uh, the success will be up to, you know, will be up to the people running the current uh, running the, the, the current uh, industry and, and the and the heads of the various uh, um, call centers and, and call center associations and BPO companies here. You know, the, the sky's the limit in terms of growth. And, you know, as long as there are companies out there in the world who are always going to be looking to, to cut costs or, or increase savings in specific projects or aspects of their business, there will always be a need for, for outsourced solutions. With regards to people listening right now, what do you want our listeners to know or to leave? Or what's your takeaway message for maybe potential clients who want to work with Aptis or just about the BPO industry here in the Philippines in general? Well, if, uh, you know, typically if I would be speaking to, to our clients, um, I w would let them know that there, there's so much value in, in outsourcing certain aspects of your business, no matter how menial, no matter how trivial, um, the savings will add up. Uh, obviously, these are, these are savings in a lot to other aspects of your business, such as marketing, perhaps, or business development, uh, product development and the like. And, you know, outsourcing, you know, outsourcing a key element of your business, whether it be front office or back office, um, could really free you up to focus on your core business, you know, and, and allow us to be able to tap into our expertise in managing customers and providing excellent consumer experiences and, and overall high quality customer service in general. You know, the talent mm -hmm. level here in the Philippines is comparable to that of the other country uh, of, of other countries. And, you know, we have a, a wide range of huge talent here in the Philippines, not just from a productive standpoint, but also from a managerial standpoint um, to be able to tailor fit and create customized uh, solutions for you and, you know, allow you to, again, like I mentioned, better focus on your business and and let us interact with your with your client base or let us take care of, of whatever, you know, whatever aspect of your business you you think you would like to be able to uh, to allocate to, to a third party. And, uh, you know, it, it's really, there. there's really so much that, that we could, you know, I, I could go on here yeah. for, for the next five minutes talking about the benefits <laughs> of it. But at the end of the day, um, at, the, at the end of the day, reduced costs will always be better for the business because you'll always be able to better allocate that to other aspects of your business that need it. And you can grow your business much quicker and grow your business more successfully. You know, all it takes is to partner up with a company, you know, who knows how to, who understands your needs and can custom fit tailor, uh, sorry, custom fit solutions um, for your outsourcing uh, requirements. Uh, how can mm -hmm. people get in touch with you and Aptis Global Solutions? Well, you can reach us through our website at aptus.ph. Um, uh, alternatively, you can send us email to, to our sales and marketing team through uh, at, you know, sales at aptus.ph and uh, our marketing department. Um, under the leadership of, of Ben Husson, my partner, we'll be sure we, you know, we'll be happy to, to spend some time with you to discuss, you know, your requirements um, and see what type of solution we can build for you. Uh, at the end of the day, we're, we're, we don't typically our goal isn't really to, 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 to gain clients. We, we want to gain partners. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we want to build your businesses with you. And, you know, no matter how small or large of a contribution this will be to your overall bottom line, you know, we, we want to make sure that whatever aspect of your business, you, you know, he, uh, you allow us to, to uh, you know, to, to work on. The, the end results will always be of very high quality. Um, again, you have, you have a, a very solid leadership team here at Aptus and very talented people who can, you know, who can realize your, your, both your short and long term goals and uh, help you build, help you build and establish your business. So I guess that's, that's pretty much it, man. Sounds great. And yeah, that's all our questions for today. And thank you for coming on the show. We're glad you could make it. Not a problem, Henry. An absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And that was Joe Mojica of Aptus Global Solutions.
Joe and I just finished talking about Aptus and the current BPO industry in the Philippines. If you want to listen to more podcasts and know more about the ins and outs of the BPO industry, you can go to www.offshoring.com.ph. We're also available on SoundCloud and iTunes. And you've been listening to Outsourcing and Offshoring, Philippines podcast with Henry Acosta. My guest today is Mike O'Hagan, who joins me from Mike's Business Tours. Now, for those of you who might be familiar with the name but can't quite put the the business biography to it, Mike's the founder of Mike's Mini Movers, um, famous with a lot of us in Australia for having packed up and shifted us across the suburbs uh, when we've moved house and has been a serial entrepreneur now for many years. Mike, welcome to the program. Thank you. Great to be here. And it's uh, it's just playing Mini Movers as well. It's... 10 other businesses today. Semi-retired I am. All oh, right. As you would be. So you've given up lifting boxes and shifting pianos? I've actually never done that. Um, I've always, <laughs> I've always, I've always owned, I still own the business 100% today and I've never actually moved a load of furniture. I, I've always worked on the business. I think if you want to grow a big business, you should only work on it, not in it. That's, that's good advice. Now, Mike, speaking of good advice... <laughs> Fill us in about um, Mike's business tours. Where did this idea come from and, and what is it you're trying to achieve? Yeah, cool. Well, well I think it's uh, pretty common knowledge that uh, during the GFC, my mini movers got into a, a bit, of, bit of trouble. Uh, in fact, quite serious trouble there for a little while. And um, I, I managed to turn the company around and save it by moving some of the processes to the, uh, to the Philippines. And... Um, uh, I learned a lot of good. I learned a lot of things uh, doing that. I learned what works very well. I also learned uh, what you shouldn't do. And I started sharing that with some business mates five years ago. And uh, a whole lot of different business mates came up to Manila at, with me, showing them around. And at the end of that, they kept saying, "That's the most amazing learning experience we've ever had." So. Out of that, I grew this Mike's business tours. It's a three-day intensive uh, learning experience in Manila and in Clark. We go to two different cities. 50% is learning about offshoring, what to do and what not to do. 50% is probably challenging your business model and probably getting that onto more of a growth model. Uh, And highly, highly successful, 360 people to date. It's just a great way to learn. It's just a massive, great learning experience about what's happening on the leading edge and how you can really change your business. Now, Mike, speaking of the leading edge, it does seem to me that in the last couple of years, lots of Australian, I guess, small and medium businesses have been outsourcing to the Philippines. Is there a trend going on here? What's what's driving this, this wave of change? At the core has to be the difference in wages. So Australia has the third largest minimum wage in the world and the Philippines probably the other end of that scale. It's not. It's quite normal for a Filipino with one or two university degrees to be earning about 100 Australian dollars per week. Um, they're well educated uh, in an Americanized system. They speak English. This is the third largest English speaking country in the world. Connect the internet to it, connect the internet and, and suddenly you can employ online um, and tap into this lower cost resource. And I think it's progressed a lot more than that now. I think a lot of us uh, are not using it to replace Australian jobs, but we're using it to invent complete new jobs. I know that in uh, my mini moves business, our whole marketing uh, lead gen system, it was completely designed and built in the Philippines and you couldn't even think of doing that in Australia. So a lot of them are new new jobs, new opportunities when you connect the two together. And it's in that swell. Overall, the industry, the industry started 22 years ago process workers for big corporates. It's changed and it's trended. SMEs have entered the market six or seven years ago and it's massive right upward trend and they don't want process workers the same way. They want thinkers and doers. And um, so the the models that we engage engage them in are changing and are much better. And it's that change and that trend that I show on the tour. I show you exactly all the different ways you can go about doing it, why they exist and why they don't exist. And um, it's all about tapping into the lower costs and smartly educated Philippines to be able to grow your Australian business. And Mike, what are the industry sectors that that are coming on the tour? Just to to give people who are listening an idea, is this butchers and beekeepers or or who are the people who are coming? 
Look, it ranges right across, it really does. Um, professional services more and more, uh, and law, accounting, uh, very much are coming up. But whole businesses, not like our mini movers, service businesses are, are, are putting whole teams up here uh, as well. So, look, anything that's facing a computer can be done in the Philippines. The education is better. The ed English is good, as I said. The big gap in the market is they don't understand Australia and they don't understand your business. And I teach on the tour that if you can bridge that gap, uh, you train them up, then you've got an, an amazing resource, um, and that's, that's, that's the key to it. Mike, it's been a pleasure having you with us, and we look forward to hearing more from you in the weeks to come. Now, for people who want to get hold of you and, and hear more from you, can they get in touch with you directly? Absolutely. Um, you can message me through Mike's Business Tours. That's M-I-K-E-S, Business Tours, T-O-U-R-S, dot com. Uh, I have another website, uh, ohagan.com.au. Uh, either of those uh, websites, you can message me directly, no problems at all. Happy to chat to anybody. Skype chats are what I really do well. Mike, thank you for your time. Thank you. Welcome to the Outsourcing and Offshoring Philippines Podcast with Henry Acosta. I'm Henry, and joining us today is Kevin Thompson of Open Look Business Solutions. Kevin is originally from SoCal and began his career in advertising for different automotive publications. He moved to the Philippines back in 2010 to develop and manage an offshore advertising sales team for a niche media company. But in two years, the team of six reps managed to generate $1.3 million in advertising. Since then, his role from managing and developing a sales team evolved into what he is today, which is to oversee all operation and functions. With all that said, welcome to the podcast, Kevin. We're glad to have you here. Thanks, Henry. I appreciate you, you inviting me. Yeah, well, uh, thanks for coming on the show. We're glad to have you here. So, yeah, to kick things off, uh, I just wanted to know, you, you're originally from SoCal. How did you come up or, yeah, what brought you here to the Philippines? Um, like you said, as, as you mentioned, I was working with a company that started an office out here in Cebu. Um, and I was given the opportunity to come out here to start an advertising sales team. Uh, prior to that, the, the team was uh, doing distribution sales for various magazines that we published. And it, it started out successfully and, and they wanted to test advertising sales, uh, which is what I was doing back in California at that time. And was given the opportunity to come out and build and, and train the team. Um, and have been here ever since. Wow. Well, how do you like your stay here so far? I love it, man. Um, it was supposed to be a one year assignment and seven years later, I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that speaks for it. Yeah. And, uh, let's talk about open look business solutions. Uh, what do you guys offer or what do you guys do for clients? Sure. We are an uh, outsourced servicing provider. We primarily focus in the publishing and media space. Um, we have three core functions that we focus on, which is uh, audience development, which is commonly referred to as telemarketing. We do a lot of uh, circulation type of phone calls, as well as lead generation um, and, and a little bit of sales, primarily for business to business publications. Um, we do have some work in, in the B2C space as well. Um, and then we do graphic design and photo retouching, which is anything from we have two different teams that work within that umbrella. And one of them is focusing on complete magazine design and layout. So they're actually preparing pages for print. Um, and then we have a retouching team that that handles images and, and works in everything. We have a, a couple different clients mm -hmm. everything that, that ranges from automotive dealerships to online retailers um sports teams things of that yeah. sort where we'll do color correcting and things like that and then we have our third division which we refer to as human intelligence tasks um and it is we do a lot of data mining data appending um list type of building uh basically what the 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 short explanation of that is a lot of our clients have data lists of prospective you know, customers of theirs, and they're lacking a couple of data points, for example, email address or uh, company size or physical address, something of that sort. Um, so we will get online and do actual you know, web searches through, through various different outlets to see what, what data we can capture for them. I see. Yeah. 
with regards to your clients, uh, how do you guys usually get them? And yeah, how do you guys get in touch with them? And how, how, has, how has it been working with you guys for them? Um, it, it, yeah, it's been good. For, for in terms of capturing clients, um, there's, there's three owners within Open Look, myself, and then I have two partners who are based in Dallas, Texas. Um, and I'm here, of course, overseeing operations, managing operations. And then my two partners um, in the U.S. are doing a lot of the business development, client relations, uh, things of that sort. So um, the, the model works really well. You know, they're, they're on the ground in the U.S. identifying people that, you know, can benefit from our services. And then my job out here is to make that materialize through operations. Um, so that model works very well. Um, in terms of how it's been for, you know, our clients, I, I, I can say, you know, I think we're doing really well. We've, we've seen some pretty, pretty good growth. Um, we've had 100% growth the last two years, actually. Wow. Congratulations. Um, yeah. In terms of, thank you. In terms of headcount and everything. Um, so I, I, I got to believe that we're doing something right for our clients and, and, you know, they're pleased with the output that we can provide for them. Awesome. And yeah, uh, with clients, do you think that maybe they should go vi visit here or visit the Philippines before they actually start doing work? Or uh, what, what advice can you give them with regards to doing outsourcing? Um, I don't think it's necessary to, to visit here. Um, very few of our clients have actually been here physically in the Philippines. Nowadays with technology, that's, you know, I think that's been a big factor in the growth of this industry, the BPO industry, because it's so easy to, to telecommute, you know, yeah. communicate through wherever you're at, you know. So um, I, I would say it's not necessary. It's definitely helpful. It's beneficial to come and see and, you know, just if nothing else, put the faces to the name and, and see how things are operating on this side as, as the clients, they obviously have experience within what they're doing, you know, so to have that hands on guidance yeah. you know early on in projects it's it's absolutely helpful but i wouldn't say it's it's a necessary factor i see and yeah when you first started out here in the philippines did you have any misconceptions during your first stay here that you know you you were glad to see that weren't real um you know i i can't really say my first trip out here was very fairly spontaneous in a way yeah uh, so I didn't really have much time to to really gather any expectations. Um, if I'm not mistaken, my first trip from the time I was offered the, the opportunity to come out and when I landed in the Philippines, I believe was seven days. So I really didn't quite have much much time to really realize what I was getting into. Yeah. Until I got here. Um, so I can't really say speak as to, to what my expectations were prior to coming and when I got here. Um, you know, it was definitely different. I'll never forget that first experience. It was definitely very yeah. different. Um, I, I have not traveled much prior to coming here. I had never been out of the U.S. Uh, prior to my first trip to the Philippines. So I really had no gauge. I didn't have any you know, real expectations. It didn't even really sink in until I had re actually landed here that I was coming here, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was, it was, it was surprising when I got here. Like I said, it's different. Yeah. Um, but within, within a half a day, I pretty much fell in love with the country. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're glad you, we're glad you like your stay here and we're glad you like the Philippines. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, with regards to Philippines, uh, how, how are the people here and what do you think of them as employees? Employees are great, man. You know, one of the one of the best things about the Philippines and, and I think one of the uniqueness is is the loyalty. Um, you know, Filipino people, through my experience, it's a, it, they're they're very loyal when taken care of and and you know, treated correctly and everything, they'll run through walls for you, man, you know. Um, and and that's that's one of the I always tell people, you know, what, what they ask me, what it's what's it like in the Philippines? How are you able to stay there so long? You know, like I said, I was supposed to be here a year. Yeah. Um, wasn't sure if I'd make it that year. And uh, now I'm still here seven years later. So people always ask me, what is it that, you know, is so 
enticing about the Philippines. And, and my response is always the people. You know, it's yeah. it's a very genuine, accommodating, loyal people. You know, like I said, I, they'll run through walls, man, and, and they work hard, um, really good work ethic. Um, so that that's that's one of the best things. That's what's made our success a lot is I've been blessed to have a really good, solid staff that, you know, really works hard. Yeah, with regards to that, what do you think it, for people who are interested in doing business with Open Look Business Solutions? Uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you guys and uh, maybe get talk to you and maybe have new clients? Yeah, you can always uh, get a hold of us through email. That's probably the, the best way, depending on where people are at in the world. Uh, my email is kevin at open-look.com. Um, the, other, the other way is, you know, via our website, which is open-look.com. Um, those would probably be the best two ways. Um, you can go from there. You know, I'm accessible via Skype as well. U.S. U.S. telephone numbers, Philippine telephone numbers. I mean, you name it, yeah. and you can pretty much get a hold of me. <laughs> yeah. With regards to outsourcing here, what do you think is the thing that usually stops people from doing it at first? Or yeah, why why are people so scared of making the jump when with regards to doing outsourcing? It can be a scary thing, you know. I mean, you're giving up a a a little bit of control in a way, at least that's the perception. You know, we really make a, make a point to explain to our clients that look, you know, our job isn't to come in and take over or, or uh, set new processes or ways for you guys. Our, our job is really to adapt to what you have going on um, and help you, you know, find ways to accomplish more work. Um, so I think some of it is, you know, Fear of the unknown, you know, yeah. and you think, okay, I've got to give up a little bit of my business or I've got to give up a little bit of my control, um, you know, well, as well as just the, the um, not knowing how, how accessible things are. You know, like I said, technology is a great thing. It, it, you can do things from all over the world now and, and pr produce the same results as if you're sitting next to each other in the same office somewhere in the States or Europe or, or, or somewhere else. Um, so technology has helped that, but it's, it's different, you yeah. know? Um, so I think, you know, just that fear of how, you know, I've had a lot of clients over the years that, you know, I just don't think that can be done. How can we do that? We've never done it that way type of thing, you know? And, and I understand that, you know, I, yeah. prior to getting into this industry and everything, I, I had the exact same thoughts, you know, but like I said, given technology, one of the nice things about the Philippines, especially for American based companies, you know, the, the, the American culture is very ingrained here. You know, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, of American exposure, U.S. exposure and things. Um, so the 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 cultural differences are, are small. You know, of course, there's some it's a different country. You're always going to have a little bit of that, but it's not as it's not as uh widely felt as it is in some other parts of the world, basically. Um, so I think, yeah, it's, it's fear of the unknown. It's new, new things that, that I would say prevent people from uh, really, really giving outsourcing and, and the BPO industry a shot at times. All right. And yeah, uh, for our listeners right now, uh, what do you want them to take away from our interview? Uh, the Philippines is a great place, man. Um, there's a lot of opportunity if, if, if you are a business owner, um, and you, you, you need assistance, getting more done, you know, you have spe special tasks that the best thing about, uh, the BPO industry is that, you know, we're here to really take some of the, the low lying fruit per se, yeah. um, off businesses tables to allow them to focus on, on the core pieces of their business. Um, you know, and, and can really help drive, drive goals and things like that. Um, like I said, the Philippines is a great place to do that. Employment wise, if, if some of the listeners are, are thinking about getting into the BPO industry or, um, working in the BPO industry, I mean, it, this is a, this is an up and coming industry. Absolutely. And I've seen many lives change, you know, through, through this industry and, you know, in terms of, accomplishing personal goals, professional goals, things of that sort. I've, I've seen I've had many employees that have, have built very nice lives for, for themselves through this industry. 
um, and have have opened up many opportunities for themselves. So, um, you know, it's the BPO industry. It's something that that needs some attention, you know, and and definitely can be taken serious. And, and there's a lot of good things that can come of it, both, you know, as, from on the employment side of, of employees trying to build careers, as well as um, companies, you know, looking to expand their ways and looking for creative, you know, unique ways to to help them accomplish their goals. You know, it's definitely something that can can help with that. Awesome. Well, that that's all our questions for today. And thanks for coming on the show, Kevin. Right on. Thank you so much, Henry, for having me. I appreciate it. Awesome. And that was Kevin Thompson of Open Look Business Solutions. We just finished talking about Open Look and how it is like to outsource here in the Philippines. If you want to listen to more podcasts like this and know more about the ins and outs of the BPO industry, you can you can go on www.offshoring.com.ph. You can also find us on SoundCloud and iTunes. You've been listening to the Outsourcing and Offshoring Philippines podcast with Henry Acosta. This episode of Offshoring and Outsourcing Philippines was brought to you by the Vertical Internet Media Production Team. The producer was Henry Acosta. Further information is available at offshoring.com.ph.